This is the F-35 of helicopters. Meet the RAH-66 Comanche. While the F-35 stealth fighter might come to mind today, in 2004, the most timely answer might have been the RAH-66 Comanche. The slick-looking stealth helicopter spent 22 years in development, consuming over $7 billion before being abruptly canceled, with only two flying prototypes to show for it. Okay, you want to take the controls? Okay. The Comanche sprang of by the Army's light helicopter experimental program conceived during the defending spending glut of the 1980s. Among other objectives, this program sought a replacement for the Army's OH-58 Kiowa and OH-6 KU scout helicopters, which were derived from the civilian Bell 206 Jet Ranger and Hughes 500 chopper. Scout helicopters were primarily tasked with spying out enemy positions and designating them for attack by friendly forces. However, they were also suitable for attacking lightly defended targets with rocket pods, miniguns, and even tank-busting tow or Hellfire missiles while armored Apache gunships tackled heavier foes. Still, the Army wanted a more survivable scout helicopter to combat the Soviet Union's huge mechanized armies, which were well protected by self-propelled short-range anti-aircraft missiles and rapid-firing flak cannons. And what better way to outwit these radar-guided systems than with the stealth technology than being pioneered by the Air Force's F-117 stealth jet? After six years of conceptual dithering, in 1988, the Army finally issued a request for proposals and selected in 1991 a futuristic design proposed by Boeing and Sikorsky. The RHA-66 Reconnaissance Attack Helicopter was formally named after the Comanche Native American tribe per Army custom. The Pentagon allocated $2.6 billion to developing the chopper, 1,200 of which were eventually planned for manufacture at the Sikorsky factory in Bridgeport, Connecticut for a total cost of $34 billion, $28 million per helicopter. That same year saw the dissolution of the Soviet Union along with the rationale and budget for building many gold-plated U.S. weapon systems such as the Seawolf-class submarine. Nonetheless, Boeing and Sikorsky proceeded with the development of two prototypes shaped with non-radar reflective surfaces made out of radar-absorbing composite materials. This allegedly gave the Comanche 1 250th the radar cross-section of an OH-58, allowing it to approach four times closer to an enemy prior to detection. A heat-dispersing scheme channeled hot exhaust into the tail for cooling by the shrouded tail fan and used infrared dampening paint to reduce the scout chopper's heat signature to one quarter of normal. Even the five downward canted blades atop the Comanche's top rotor were designed to produce half as much noise as a regular helicopter. Should it be detected, the Comanche was further shielded by radar warning systems, self-defense jammers, chafe and flare dispensers, and enough Kevlar and graphite armor to withstand heavy machine gun rounds and 23 millimeter shells. A pilot and weapon systems officer sat in a tandem arrangement operating the helicopter with special helmet-mounted sights and liquid crystal multifunction displays. Like a stealth fighter, the Comanche could carry up to six Hellfire anti-tank missiles in internal weapon bays so that the protruding weapons didn't increase its radar signature. Even the Scout Chopper's landing gear and chin-mounted triple-barrel 20mm XM301 Gatling cannon were designed to retract inwards. Should firepower take precedence over stealth, the RAH-66 could fit wing stubs allowing it to more than double its weapons load. The Comanche was also the ultimate dogfighting helicopter. With an impressive maximum speed of 200 miles per hour, the agility to pull off tight turns and near loop-de-loops, and capacity for 12 AIM-92 Stinger heat-seeking anti-aircraft missiles. The chopper's triple redundant fly-by-wire flight control kept it stable even while undertaking tight maneuvers. The RH-66 used a long-range forward-looking infrared sensor to spot enemies, which it could then illuminate with a laser target. A millimeter wave longbow radar could be optionally mounted atop the rotor, allowing the crew to peek over concealing hill crests and trees. Sensor data could then be relayed to friendly forces via high-speed data links. In January 1996, a RAH-66 prototype finally made its first flight and a second prototype joined it three years later. But as later occurred with the F-35, the Comanche incorporated so many brand new technologies that developing, 
debugging, and integrating nearly triple development costs over time. For example, the helicopter came to be hundreds of pounds heavier than expected, resulting in post-facto weight trimming and efforts to develop more powerful T-800 turboshaft engines. The RAH-66's software proved buggy, its sensors unreliable, and its radar-absorbent materials susceptible to erosion when exposed to rain. Meanwhile, the Army benchmarks crept upwards. For example, requiring the light scout helicopters somehow to be able to carry enough fuel for transoceanic ferry flights. By 2002, the cost overruns and delays had won the Comanche many bureaucratic foes, and wars in Afghanistan and Iraq soon diverted spending to pressing operational contingencies, resulting in planned procurement to nearly half at 650. Finally, in 2004, the Comanche was abruptly canceled after over $7 billion in spending, including a half billion dollar cancellation penalty. The two prototypes are now displayed at the Army's Aviation Museum at Fort Rucker, Alabama. Had the Pentagon poured in additional billions, the RAH's 66 lingering bugs might eventually have been ironed out, resulting in a decent scout helicopter. But the 22-year-old program simply was no longer relevant enough to justify its financial excesses. For one, stealth is much more of a trump card for a high and fast-flying jet plane than a helicopter flying at a fraction of the speed at low altitude. While the Comanche's stealth properties were certainly useful, the helicopter would have remained vulnerable to all manner of short-range anti-aircraft weapons and likely heat-seeking missiles. Indeed, the Army deemed the RAH-66 would have required costly additional upgrades to survive the latest SAM systems. Furthermore, unlike the F-35, the Comanche was fulfilling a relatively niche support role in the Pentagon's war machine. The RAH-66 procurement would have consumed roughly 40% of the Army's annual aviation budget, even though transport and attack helicopters were higher priorities. Besides, AH-64Ds were already being fielded with longbow radars, and for surveillance missions, the Army preferred to invest in cost-effective drones that could undertake risky scouting missions without placing human lives at risk. As Lt. Col. Dan Ward put it in a lacerating piece in Time magazine, the Comanche was unaffordable, unnecessary, and despite more than two decades of effort, incomplete. The RAH-66 numbered amongst five Army programs that collectively sucked $30 billion in spending without producing any operational systems. At best, the RAH-66 pioneered technologies believed to have been integrated into special MH-60 Black Hawk stealth helicopters used to perform secretive commando missions, including the Navy SEAL raid which killed bin Laden. The Army went on using OH-58D Kiowa warriors in Afghanistan and Iraq until the type was finally retired in 2017, leaving the Army without any medium scout helicopters. Several attempts to procure low-cost replacements such as the OH-58F and the ARH-70 Arapaho subsequently fell through. Late model AH-64E Apache Guardians have replaced Kiowas in attack reconnaissance battalions, but have proven a poor fit for the mission. Thus, history seemingly is repeating itself as the Army is yet again seeking another cutting-edge scout helicopter called Future Armed Reconnaissance Aircraft to enter production in 2028. If FARA can overcome a legacy of past failures, it will likely do so by incorporating mature, affordable technologies and staying committed to disciplined budgets and development processes. The Comanche, in theory, might have been an awesome-looking helicopter, but that did not make it any less of a poorly managed defense program.